All right. Good evening, saints. I think we're all set up here now. Uh, good to be with you again this evening. Thankful for this forum that this is at least one way we can keep in contact one with another. I want to remind you uh, tomorrow, uh, by tomorrow evening, if you would, go to your website and uh, look under the uh, block that says messages and uh, announcements. And I will be giving some information uh, we've been having people ask about church openings and uh, not that anybody's rushing, but they want to know what's in view. So tomorrow, if you'll take a look at the website and go under announcements or messages from the pastor, uh, you'll find some data that we want to share with you uh, as we think about where, how do we move forward from here. And so trust that you'll look at that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for this evening. We pray, Lord, that you will be will 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 help us to learn and, uh, Lord, be encouraged and to grow. And, God, help us to know how to thrive, function, and, Father, be victorious over everything that is presently facing us. And we also, Lord, that you'll work on our minds and our hearts and our souls as, Lord, we are seeking to find out best how to live for you in this present situation. And even if this was a time that was good, we still need to know how to live for you. So pray for the hearers and the teaching of the word tonight in Jesus name. Amen. I'm going to give you a short devotional uh, teaching. This is coming out of the book of Isaiah chapter 21, two, two verses. And it's going to take a little bit of time, not much to sort of let you do, read over it because you're, you're going to be asking when you read it, what is this all about? The Bible says the burden of Duma, he called to me out of seer. Watchman, what of the night? Watchman, what of the night? The watchman said, the morning cometh and also the night. If you will inquire, inquire ye. Return, come. Those are some words that are spoken by Isaiah as he's responding, it seems as though a region or an area, a part of a, a area outside of Israel, a land that is called uh, Duma or Seir, Seir. Uh, this is around the mountain of Seir, so this is a, a geographical location. And from that, there's a voice that comes inquiring of the watchman. And let's just assume that Isaiah is the watchman. And that this is an inquiry uh, of the watchman about what is going on. Uh, first of all, I want to commend the person who's inquiring because I think it's important that we go to those who can give us instructions and guidance, uh, not just in a difficult time, but at all time. And so this person, we want to commend them for their wisdom. It's like the vision that Paul had in Acts, come over into Macedonia and help us. There is someone in this region that is inquiring from the, the watchman uh, what it is that he uh, need, wanted to know concerning the night. It's in also in Isaiah 21 and verse 6. As we read about this duty of a watchman, he says, For thus saith the Lord, thus hath the Lord said unto me, Go set a watchman, let him declare what he seeth. And then if you drop down to verse 8, Particularly the last part, but I'll read the whole thing. This is Isaiah 21, 8. And he cried, a lion, my Lord. I stand continually upon the watchtower in the daytime, and I am set in my ward whole nights. Now we know from Ezekiel that a watchman is someone who basically stood out at nighttime and then would tell them what was coming. He was to warn them of dangers, uh, to give a report of what took place. Uh, he sat on a high tower looking out. Uh, woe to the watchman who went to sleep on the job and did not do what he was supposed to do. Uh, Ezekiel tells us that if the watchman uh, was watching as he should, uh, if evil was coming, he was to warn the wicked. And if the wicked turned, uh, then it was good for the uh, wicked. If the wicked didn't turn, it would be bad for the wicked. But if the watchman saw the evil and didn't warn the wicked, it would be bad for the watchman. 
He also, in Ezekiel, says, if the righteous, people who are walking right with God, do a turnaround. In other words, they decide they want to move in a different direction. Then the responsibility of the watchman was to warn the righteous. These are people who have made some acknowledgement that God is. But for some reason, whatever the reason may be, they have decided that following God or pursuing something other than God is in their best interest. And the watchman is to warn them. He's to warn them that the path is wrong and that they should turn around. If the righteous hear it, then the watchman, he's done his job. If the righteous don't hear it, the watchman has done his job. But if the, watch, the watchman doesn't warn the righteous, as well as having previously warned the wicked, then God would hold the watchman accountable for not doing his duty of what he was supposed to do. In the military, one of the things I had doing, I wasn't in Vietnam itself. I was in during Vietnam era, but I never went into the country. But they did have us guarding uh, different bases. One of the things I had to do was to guard military equipment, airplanes particularly. That was one duty I had for a while. And we were constantly told before we went out, drummed into us, you can't go to sleep on watch. If you're caught sleeping on watch, you'll be court-martialed. And so it didn't matter how cold it was. We, I, I can still remember being out in a, in a winter uh, with all of my gear and a gun and all of this stuff. And we had to watch these planes. And I was by myself, solitary duty, nobody out there. And you have to walk around. You got to stay awake. You got to stay alert. And uh, but you also were more afraid of the officer of the day or the night watch officer finding you not on your post doing what you were supposed to do. So there was fear. If I could turn that analogy, every person who is a watchman on the wall ought to have a fear of the person who's over them, the one who has given them the instructions of what to do, which is God. And so the watchman should be in fear of not fulfilling his duties to warn people or to do his job when he's been placed there by a superior. In this case, we'll say God. But once he is set there, he has an obligation. His, his duties are clearly outlined. He doesn't have to guess. You're supposed to watch and you're supposed to warn people of what you see. And then maybe in the morning you give a report of what took place. That was the obligation that you had. And so here we have in Isaiah this watch watch person. Again, in verse uh, Isaiah 21, he says, Go set a watchman and let him declare what he seeth. Now, he can't make it up. It can't be sensational news. It can't be something that is coming from his own imagination. He has to give a warning of what is actually there, something that's real. In this case... When you get into the word of God, you can't create it. You can't make it up. You have to give it like it is. That is what the watchman has to do. Now, obviously, we need to read our times and we need to look out and see what's outside of us. Uh, someone is looking at the virus and they say, Pastor, what do you think? And I'm telling them, uh, listen, we've had pandemics before. We're going to have them probably again. They're not something that anybody wants. This is new territory for my generation. But my parents, my father and mother were around in 1917 when that one hit. And so we've seen things before. So there's going to be night. There's going to be day. But then he says to the people listening, there's going to be night again. And so there's to be a report. What is going on? What is taking place? Now, if you're inquiring as, as to what's going on, it must mean that whoever this person was that was in Seir among this particular tribe that was being visualized, calling out to the prophet, what about it? If you ask the questions, what does it mean? You must be really be willing and ready to respond and do something with what you hear. God does not want us to be hearers only, but he also wants us to be doers of what we hear. There are people who are expressing some anxieties and fears about the time we're in. What I want to know is, what are you going to do when this time is over, when the when the day comes and the night is over? There are people that's worried about uh, uh, the, the, the 
the emotional and the mental and the spiritual things that are happening in their lives because of the environment. My question is, what are you going to do when the, the day comes and all of this is over? But I want to say to all of us, we better prepare ourselves for day, but we also need to prepare ourselves for different types of nights. You know that you have a, a morning of youth. There's a morning that you're young and vibrant. There's going to be a nighttime of old age where those things that you once could do with your youth, you no longer can do. And trust me, I'm talking to the choir. It is amazing how now I recall when I used to jump off of porches and jump out of trees and jump off of steps. But I'm going to tell you right now, uh, it's not total dark, but I am not jumping off anything and I very rarely want to climb anything because I'm walking slower. As a matter of fact, there are some things that are just too high anymore. Things that used to didn't bother me. There's going to be a nighttime with your youth and a nighttime with your old age. There's a nighttime, there's a daytime with your health where you have just nothing but you get up, you feel good, everything's ticking. And there's also sometimes a night where the medicine cabinet tells you what time it is because you have to take something for everything it's amazing when you go in the drugstore they have signs like foot things for feet things for eyes things for you know allergies you, you have that they, they label everything uh, and tell you where to find it and based on what body part is hurting or need that's the, the aisle you go into uh, it's probably becoming easier for us to define what's not hurting us than to tell you what he is hurting because the list is getting longer. There is a daytime of good health. There's a nighttime of the body uh, showing its age. There is also a daytime of good ideas. It's amazing how uh, you can have bright ideas. Your mind is clicking. There's another time when you can't remember what happened five minutes ago. Uh, someone asked me about memory. And uh, you have to ask yourself, are you remembering as well as you used to? I said that in jest, but I want to remind you that there are going to be seasons of days and nights. I believe that we're going to get through this pandemic. I'm not sure how long because that's unpredictable. I know we've had things in the past. I also believe that we'll get through it. But you know what? I got to be brutally honest, according to scripture. You'll have day, you'll have night, you'll have day, but there's another night coming of something totally different. For you and I, if we read the Bible and we, we believe it for what it says, we know we're progressively moving towards something that's going to be horrific for this earth. To be honest with you, what we're experiencing now in comparison is probably nothing. Now I say we. As a believer, there are some parts of the future I am looking to avoid because of the rapture. That's going to be day. Uh, can you imagine waking up, as the song says, one day in glory and breathing fresh air and finding it celestial? That's the song. Those are the words of the song. That we will have day, and thank God, according to the book of Revelation, there will be no night there. And we won't really have need of the sun and moon. Revelation says God is the light thereof. That's the time we're looking for. There's an old Methodist uh, favorite. I'm sure others sing it, but my first time hearing it was in an old Methodist church. And the title of the song was, Oh, They Tell Me of an Uncloudy Day. We're looking for daytime. Uh, for those of us who are locked inside, can't get around like we want to, you're wanting this to change. I believe it will. But I also believe that we got to be prepared because while we may have a day, we've had day. Now we have night. We are hoping to have a day again. I believe it will be there. But I also believe we're going to have night again. And so this prophecy is not a gloom and doom of how bad it is. Remember the person who called and said, what about watchman? What about the day? What about the night? If you inquire, it means you should be re ready to prepare. And so the biggest preparation is prepare for the day. 
but also prepare for the night. And the best thing you can do to prepare is to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. If you walk with him, you'll walk in the light because he's the light of the world. And if you know him as your personal Lord and Savior, you don't have to fear the day. And if you know him as your Lord and Savior, you won't be caught unawares about what is happening in our world. Because the Bible says you're supposed to be a child of light when not a child of the darkness. God bless you. And we'll be talking again to you soon. I thought Isaiah's message was appropriate. What about watchmen? What about the night? Repeat it. Watchman, what about tonight? And if you have hope and you've inquired, at least if you inquire about biblical things, be ready to implement those biblical things. Be ready to be obedient to them because you know this is what God wants us to do. It doesn't matter if it's day or night for us. We ought to be living for Jesus. Whether you locked up in your home or walking around in public, you ought to be living for the Lord in this day and time. God bless you. And we'll be talking at you again.